Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Dietschy, rhymes with Peachy. If you're new around here today, we are talking about, well, both Windows and Mac OS. And my M1 MacBook has kind of been collecting dust on a shelf, so I was like, Sarah, that's not right. And also, I'm selling this iMac behind me after almost a year. Why, you ask? Well, very soon I'm actually getting rid of my office. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. 2020, I worked from home a ton, so I did not expect this iMac to become like my main machine, which kind of got in the way of editing 4K videos and just shuffling all of the crazy apps that I'm always using at the same time. So we are doing a huge desktop computer refresh. I'm so excited to show you my new do everything ultra mega computer video on that in a couple weeks. But because of that, I realized, oh, I don't have any like Mac computers I'm using right right now and if I make tech videos, I gotta stay hip with it, right? There are just so many things that I actually like better with Windows opposed to Mac OS. Now, I know you, you guys are probably like, what? Yeah, it's true. Uh, maybe I was the most partial in 2017 when I had just switched from Mac OS to Windows. You can go back and watch those several videos I made about if you're doing the switch from Mac to Windows. Hopefully those videos help you out. So here I am now with the M1 MacBook because I am going to make a Premiere beta update. The video is coming soon. Uh, but as I was just navigating around this laptop, I was like, ooh, I don't like this and that. And as I was tinkering with these different apps, I was like, I should make a video about this. So, you know, I guess I'm kind of turning my M1 MacBook into a Windows laptop. Or maybe this is just a MacBook app tour? I think people do videos like that, right? <laughs> okay, so let's hop into it. Okay, so listen, there are some things about Windows uh, that you just can't get over in Mac OS, and they are little things, but I do like them. Let's start off with a goofy one. If you have a File Explorer tab or Chrome or any anything pulled up with a lot of other stuff cluttering in the background, you can basically shake that window with your mouse super fast, and it clears everything off in the background other than that window that you shake. Sounds silly, but I use it a lot. Another thing I unfortunately couldn't bring over to Mac OS via an application or something is the way apps are actually super interactive on the taskbar. So I really enjoy it when I'm exporting proxies and media coder and maybe, uh, you know, exporting a video in Premiere. You actually get that progress bar on the app while it's exporting. So really the apps kind of come alive and while you're doing other things, you're like, okay, that video isn't exported yet. And then also when you hover over Chrome, you get previews of the windows that are currently open. A couple of things unique to Mac OS, you can actually drag a file over an app. So say I wanna edit a picture on my desktop, super quick in Photoshop, just drag it, drop, opens up in the application. You're organizing files, going through a lot of things. Instead of having a ton of Fire Explorer, Fire Explorer, not Fire, file explorer tabs open. Instead of that, with Finder windows, you can actually have multiple tabs within Finder, which I forgot about and I've actually been enjoying a lot. Okay, but probably the biggest thing I miss the most when it comes from going to Windows to Mac OS is Windows management. I'm telling you, just doing the Windows arrow key to snap a window to the left and then snap one to the right. I full screen Chrome and a ton of apps all the time by simply just dragging them up to the top of the screen and it full screens so many things about that that are just easy when dealing with a ton of windows you just you don't have over in Mac OS land. Of course, you can swipe up with three fingers, go into mission control, drag apps and create different spaces like that. Uh, you can also hold down the green circle button to go full screen or tile the window to the left of the screen, to the right of the screen. Uh, but that's just, that doesn't satisfy me. Those aren't quick shortcuts to, to move things around. Well, I went through actually a ton of different apps and my favorite by far was Magnet. Now you're not gonna like me, it's a paid app App, but it's $4.99. It previously was $2. They bumped it up a bit, but I found that it is so worth it. Basically, you can use the same keyboard shortcuts to snap windows, just like over in Windows land, but the thing that I miss the most is the ability to drag those windows up side to side, doing it with your cursor, with your trackpad, and doing that windows management that way. It's just so fast and easy to use. Again, I probably do it a million times a day, just dragging a window to the top of the laptop to go full screen. And because this actually doesn't make them full screen, full screen, like, like the Mac full screen, 
screen version, you still basically have the menu at the top. This allows you to also say, open up another application like Finder and have the ability of another app to float on top of a full screen application or multiple uh, you know, tiled applications, if that makes sense. Because that's something that I also love about Windows is even when you're in full screen mode, you can still open up different apps on top of that full screen mode. It doesn't snap you back to your normal desktop. Some of you guys are probably like, okay, Sarah, this is, this is too in the weeds, I don't care. But like, these are the little things that are kind of shocking when you move from, you know, a different system. And yeah, hopefully, whether you use a Mac computer, a Windows-based computer, you're learning something. Maybe you'll, you'll walk away with at least like one little tip. Okay, be honest with me, Windows users, did you know about the wiggle thing? The, the wiggle, wiggle? Okay, I have several more points to share with you. Trust me, I have been obsessed with this over the past few days. But before we move forward, thank you so much to SayMine.com for sponsoring this video. And guys, trust me, you want to hear this. Do you want to be in control of your data and reclaim that personal information that so many websites have collected throughout the years? Mine is a smart data assistant that helps you find where your data is and automates the reclaim request process from these companies. So well, what does that mean? Well, I logged in via one of my emails to see all of the different companies that have my data. And if you can see, I have to say it was kind of shocking discovering how many of these companies have my data and how many I actually don't use anymore or have any idea who they are. Like, like who is this company? I've actually made a video kind of about this, talking about how I wanted to unsubscribe from all of these random marketing emails I was getting. Well, this takes it one step further and you're not only not gonna get emails from them anymore, but this scrapes the data clean from their databases. That means they can't sell your information to third parties or do whatever else the heck they do with emails and names and address and your financial information. Also, the more data you have out there, the more susceptible you could be to a data breach. So many things to think about. So, Mine makes it easy to manage your data and also keep track of all of the new services that you sign up for. Exercise your right to be forgotten and reclaim your data from the services that you just don't use anymore. If you're interested, check out my link in the description below. Mine is free right now, but in a few months they are actually shifting to a subscription. So this little secret is just between you and me. Check out saymine.com and thank you for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, back to the deets, the Mac OS Windows stuff. It's amazing that it's my job to talk. <laughs> okay, Windows. I love how they do the app switcher. Of course, you can do alt tab to do this, or you can use the trackpad, three fingers swipe left to right to uh, select out of all of the apps that you have open. Now over in Mac land, yes, you can do this. It is command tab and this uh, you know shows all the apps that you have open and then you can let up on the keyboard and switch to the app. But I just hate how you can't see a preview of those apps. Like I don't care about the logo. I want to see, you know, some actual previews. What conversation do I have going on over in messages? What notion tab do I have pulled up? Well, fear not because there's not only a app for that, but it's open source. It's completely free. Um, there's a lot of options out there. This one actually took some more research, but they're all just crappy. I even paid for a few and I just did not like how they worked. Okay. So alt tab works exactly the same way as task switcher does on windows. So you basically do it by option tab and look oh how beautiful you get previews of finder iMessage notion and it's just a more beautiful way to switch in between apps you can also uh, go in between them using your trackpad not just using option tab the only bummer with this is you can't activate it by sliding on the trackpad you know with three fingers like you can on Windows um, but hey I'll settle for this for now I wrote the developers a little note um, I couldn't find like a tip jar or or something like that for, for these guys too. So you should add that because I'm a fan, good job, love it. 
and thank you for making it free. Okay, so the last big hurdle that I had to jump over to make Mac OS work for my workflow was to figure out audio when I'm screen recording. So if you're familiar with QuickTime and that's how you do your screen records, if you notice, you can't take the audio from your desktop. So say you're playing a YouTube video or you have some audio coming from your computer, you can't actually capture that audio. Really the only option is just using the mic from the laptop. And that does not work for me a lot of the time. When you're using a Windows computer, that's something you just don't have to worry about. Whether you're using OBS or you know an expensive streamer and recorder software, your computer audio always shows up and is always an option to record or stream. Now, this is something that I solved with Max using a audio driver plugin called iShow Audio, but now with Big Sur, that is just not an option. There are apps that you can pay for like ScreenFlow, but this is over $100 and it kind of holds your hand throughout the process uh, to figure out what you need downloaded for this. Um, but it only takes a few steps and then you can use OBS. I use Streamlabs OBS. You can use those free streaming and recording programs uh, just with this plugin and the audio will work wonderfully. So install this free audio driver called Black Hole. And then when you go into OBS, you'll immediately notice that it's picking up the audio levels from your computer. That's great, but it won't also play the audio out your speakers of your MacBook or Mac. All you have to do is go to your audio MIDI setup and create a multi-output device. So you check your MacBook speakers and you're good to go. You just select the black hole as your audio output when selecting audio output capture and boom. Go team. Another thing that I like about Windows is how it just handles audio in general. You know, you click on the icon and you can select in between the different outputs, the, the volume rocker. This is handy when you're dealing with a desktop and you have headphones plugged in, but you have the speakers of your monitor, but also the speakers of your speakers. And it's just really easy to change between those super quickly. But something that I feel like people still don't know about Big Sur is if you go into Control Center, you can actually take any of these little buttons that you use a lot and drag them over to your toolbar for easy access. So you can see here that I dragged the little sound icon over. So all you have to do is click it. You can choose your different outputs really quick right here. You see here I have the black hole audio driver and also the multi output device, but also you can control the sound right here if your touch bar freezes up because you don't have physical volume buttons. I did this for all the things. So sound, you have display settings to change in between dark mode uh, super quickly, Bluetooth, what's currently playing, and then obviously Wi-Fi. I'm pretty sure Wi-Fi has just always been there, but just drag and drop what you want from Control Center, boom. I think at this point I've almost drag and dropped like all of them. If you're curious about the settings I use uh, for screen recording, I usually use Streamlabs OBS when I need that audio capture. Sometimes I'll use QuickTime just for some quick screen records, but I use the high quality, the one that's like right below the lossless, uh, and I use MOV and that gives me a really nice image. So listen, things that I just really miss when I use the MacBook. Um, I miss my touch screen. I am just team touch screen until I die on laptops. Uh, but I guess the lack of touching here, is that gonna trigger some of you guys, me touching a MacBook display? <laughs> I guess the lack of touch could be made up for sidecar, you know, wirelessly connecting to an iPad and using the touch on the iPad. I mean, that works really well. Um, it is a good workflow, but still just put, put touch on MacBooks, please. And then one other last just handy tip for the people who are over in Windows land and you're just like, man, you know, the whole thing where you can press spacebar on a Mac and, and preview files, that is super handy. I wish I had that over in Windows land. Well, I've actually shared this with you before. There's an app that you can download in the Microsoft store called Quick Look that solves this. Um, but something interesting happened where I feel like I need to do kind of an update with that. Not only does that still work really well, but Quick Look also shows previews of files that I can't preview on a Mac. So a lot of these new cameras have been coming out and the Kodaks are different. We're not used to some of them. So the Sony a7S III, a lot of the footage from this camera, Finder is just not gonna show you a preview of it. And this is kind of annoying for people when they're trying to look through the footage uh, on an SD card before they copy over the footage to their hard drive. They wanna sift through, press spacebar, and preview their videos. But they can't do that anymore and it's super annoying. Well. 
guess what? Over in Windows Land, when you use the Quick Look app and you press the space bar to preview the footage, it's still going to preview that A7S III footage and those Kodaks that, uh, you know, maybe we're not used to over here in Finder Land. So I thought that was really interesting because I saw a few photog videographer people complain about that on Twitter and I was like, oh wait, look, this is actually a big win for me who uses Quick Look most of the time when I'm in Windows. Okay, so I know this video was kind of random, um, and you know, it's not like I was foreign to Mac OS. I've been very familiar with it, especially using my iMac more and more since I went less and less to the office during, you know, the things that have been happening in the world. But for some reason, going back to a MacBook for the first time ever and kind of having these muscle memory things that I do on Windows laptops, I was it was kind of more jarring. And I, I was like, oh, I need those features. I need window snapping and the task switcher the way I'm used to it. So maybe you learned a few things and maybe you're sitting here and you're like, oh, I might want to switch to Windows, who knows? Probably less people are doing that now because the M1 uh, is just so successful. And this is the one time that I'm like, okay, yes, I'm listening to you guys. I, I promise I'm gonna do more creative app reviews on the M1 since uh, there's still some outstanding stuff there. I hear you, I'm doing it just for you. I don't wanna do it, but I'll do it just for you. So there's probably less people switching to Windows, but if you are, I have several videos that detail all of the little quirks uh, and things like Quick Look that you can download and check out. So I put all the links in the description below. If you're curious about these apps, check out saymine.com. If you want to reclaim your data, reclaim your privacy, uh, it's a really cool service. And wow, it is so valuable in the age of our data is everywhere. Let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button for new videos every single week. And I think I actually have a Q&A video coming up in a few days because I was like, you know what? I just wanna sit down and talk to the Peachy fam. You guys asked me a lot of good questions on the Twitter, so we're gonna get juicy. We're really gonna dive into things, so make sure you hang around for that. And until next time, y'all, stay peachy. Okay, bye.